This year, autumn arrived so quickly, and as October approached, I was preparing myself to enter into the busiest month of my entire year. I had some really important shifts ahead of me, and as the autumn equinox arrived, it felt like a calm before a storm. With the arrival of Mabon, I began to prepare for these shifts, and I started by setting out on an adventure to my favorite forest in search of the coastal mugwort I was going to need for the times ahead. I forgot to look at the tide charts before I left the house and the tide is rising and flooding the mugwort forest so I'm not gonna have as much time as I thought. <laughs> so I'm at one of my favorite river spots and I really do feel like a part of my soul lives here and I usually come out here quite a bit during the summer and I hike way way upstream but I have only come up here once with my cousin at the beginning of the summer because there was a cougar warning for this specific area. Cougars have literally been running rampant through our town. A cougar ate an animal in my yard and I've never actually seen one but I don't want to mess with any, I don't want to mess with the cougar. And so I haven't been coming up here, but it is the fall equinox today and I need to collect my coastal mugwort. It is a tradition of mine that I do at this time every year. And so I've taken the risk. <laughs> I've come upstream and I am here to get my mugwort. There's actually not a lot of mugwort in this area in the way that it has been in previous years. And that's because there was a log that, um, or a tree that fell across the river and it's now washed up on the beach here. And so it's kind of wiped out a lot of the mugwort, unfortunately. So I might need to go farther upstream and go through the water so I could get wet, I could see bears, I could see cougars, but I will get mugwort. <laughs> I just need to make it over there without getting eaten. <laughs> this water is absolutely freaking freezing. Oh my God. I'm so close. <laughs> I was kind of laughing at myself on this trek because I literally felt like Laura Dern in that scene in Jurassic Park when she's trying to get from point A to B without getting eaten in the forest. Even though I had two whistles, a knife, bear spray, and a rescue horn, I kept looking over my shoulder the entire time. But I made it to my coastal mugwort, collected what I needed, and was on my merry way. is over there. The tide is totally high. There's something in the bush over there. It's making a ruckus. As I began sinking into autumn and the changing earth, I started to prepare more deeply for the darkness and all of the events that I had coming up. 
At the autumn equinox, I like to prepare my space so that when the time comes for my winter shadow work, I can really just focus on that. I also had Samhain Witch Camp coming up and I was receiving my black cord in witchcraft with the Samhain full moon. It wasn't even until editing this video that I fully realized how deeply I had to push myself in October and I couldn't have predicted really how the events were about to unfold. Something that I really wanted to do in October was to bulk batch some of the content that I was going to need for the winter. I wanted to film with the remaining flowers and also film outside before it got really, really cold. One of the biggest filming to-dos that I had was for a bath ritual video which I filmed at Anna's Flower Farm where I also made some content for Boho Magic. My biggest priority though was getting my house ready for the winter descent and for my upcoming black cord ceremony that was happening at my place and in my enchanted forest. I made my to-do list and began the work of organizing every single thing I own and cleaning every crevice and corner. I was about to step through a new threshold and I didn't want to take anything unnecessary with me. One of the things I needed to do in October was to take my soft plastics from this entire year to recycling. I love to lay out my plastics before I recycle them so that I can give myself a reality check. And I always think that I'm being conscious of my disposable plastic intake, but this time looking at what I had collected for the entire year was super, super jarring. And I know that I need to make some shifts there. My to-do list was going strong and I had a lot of responsibilities, so many that I was just so overloaded and so overwhelmed, so I ended up pushing myself to make my magic a priority because those were the moments that really gave me fuel. So sprinkled in between all the things that I had to do, I chose to do some magic. I did art magic and kitchen witchery and of course I made my blackberry spell paper as I do every fall. Then out of nowhere Thanksgiving arrived, and like every year, I was in charge of the Brussels sprouts. The following week, I headed to Samhain Witch Camp. I arrived a day early because I was on the volunteer committee this time. To say that I was unprepared for the outcome of that weekend would be a massive understatement. I just got to witch camp. It was a friggin' mad dash, if there has ever been one. <laughs> but I am here and I'm about to set up and pick my spot. I get first tent pick spot, first tent spot pick. <laughs> I was in a really vulnerable place at this time. My reality was crumbling and the veil was lifting for me to witness my wounds in a really painful but necessary way. Samhain Witch Camp was kind of like a spiritual test before my initiation at the end of the month. It's difficult to put into words the journey that I went on that weekend, but it was one of the most important spiritual experiences of my life. This whole year, I was really attached to my past and how the losses I was currently experiencing were a result of my past. 
It was like I could hear spirit say that the past wasn't my fault, but now I need to get my shit together. And spirit was letting me know that they were there to help me do it. Right on the coattails of witch camp, I started to enter into a period of introspection far earlier in the season than I thought I would. The weather started to get really cold and I started to shut out the world to focus on my initiation and the work I needed to do for it. So I took this time to get my enchanted forest ready for the ceremony. I was really, really burnt out and I was really struggling, and I had to make some hard decisions about what I was realistically able to achieve moving forward. So, as you can see, I did not winterize the garden like I said I was going to in my garden update video. I just, um, I've stretched myself really thin, and I... I just didn't do it. So yeah, you guys have been giving me a lot of advice about my garden and I think I'm just literally gonna leave it. Um, we are going to be making, we, me and my dad are gonna be making a lot of changes in our yard and our garden in the spring. And so I'm just releasing <laughs> this. And um, right now I'm just going to harvest what's left and just maybe clear up just a few things because once the spring comes and we do a big weed I don't want to pull out plants that shouldn't get pulled out so I just want to make sure a few things are really clear. Look at all the foxgloves. So many. After I did the mundane yard work, I prepared the enchanted forest for my ceremony by cleaning up the pathways and building an ancestral cairn. Then, the day of my ceremony, on the Samhain full moon, I set up my altar, all the lanterns, and the candles. I'm going to dive more into my ceremony and witchcraft courting in another video, but courting is really an intentional spiritual initiation. It marks a time for a witch when they are choosing to ascend higher within their spiritual path and purpose, but it also involves descending into some of our hardest truths and our toughest shadows, the ones that are stubborn and foundational. I was receiving my last cord, completing a journey I had started eight years ago, and at this time, I was a total mixed bag of emotions, feeling so much gratitude for how far I'd come, and also feeling deep, deep grief for the past versions of myself I was about to leave behind. Suddenly, in the blink of an eye, it was Halloween, and my friends threw an epic Halloween party, where I went as Lydia from Beetlejuice, and my dad went as Rick Grimes. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Okay.
as November began, I had a total and complete energetic crash and I descended into a deep sleep. For the next month, I only worked and slept and said no to absolutely everything. The dark nights had cast a sleepy spell on me and had created a womb for me to slumber in and I let myself sleep like a baby without any guilt. But then one day in November, something unbelievable happened that reminded me this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. One day, I woke up late in the day and immediately felt like I was supposed to open my back door. And there, in the maple that canopies my yard, was a sleeping black bear. The thing was, though, that on the night of my black cord, I asked spirit to send me a black bear. That night, I had a dream of a black bear, and I accepted that that was my sign, and it wasn't going to be something in the 3D. But then spirit delivered in a way that I could have never imagined. Being able to sit safely under this tree and to watch this bear sleep was such a gift. It was such a validation, actually, for me about so many of the things I had been wavering on, and a reminder that I need to ask for what I want in life. A couple weeks later, a friend told me that if I were an animal, I'd be a bear. And it occurred to me that in my slumber was a gift from spirit too, and that I was mirroring the sign I had asked for, and that the wisdom I was seeking was already within me. And like the bears, I was in the midst of a divinely guided deep rest, preparing to recalibrate for what was about to come.